Welcome to WDEX The Wired Differently Experience. My name is Todd Saylor, and yes, I'm the author of the brand, the book, and the attitudinal disorder wired differently. My job is to motivate you. My job is to teach you. My job is to inspire you, encourage you, and to love you. The show's job, though, the show's job is to challenge the status quo and dare you not to be average. Super Bowl Sunday. You know, I thought about not going on the air because I was just going to kick back and watch other people do their things, and I started to think about myself. As I got off the plane from Indiana when I flew back here just yesterday... We landed in Tampa Bay, the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where they're going to play in the Super Bowl. And as I got off the plane, and as we debarked from the tram, there must have been 30 people in uniforms cheering and hollering and hooping and saying, Woo, you got this, man. You can do it. It was crazy. I was like, I was going right into the stadium, and they were going to be cheering for me as a warrior. And it got me thinking, why just athletes? Why just them? I mean, I'm pretty good. I'm damn good at what I do. Why are they getting all the accolades? Why are they getting hoops and hollers and celebrated all the time? And I start to think about the people that are even better than me at my job and my companies and how good they are. These people are amazing in IT and in manufacturing and factoring and making donuts. I have donut makers that are just unbelievable working at two in the morning, eight hours, 10 hours at a time. Tom Brady couldn't make one damn donut if he had to. That's what I'm talking about. You should be celebrated. You should be getting hooped and hollered off you come off the train at the airport. I'm talking about you. That's what we're going to talk about today. I want to celebrate you because you are elite at your craft and you deserve to be treated as such. I get tired of all them getting the accolades. What about you? What about you? I know a guy by the name of Nick Wallen. I've talked with him a couple times about him on this show. And he he's, walks across volcanoes that are on fire. He walks across the Grand Canyon with water running under it. He walked across Niagara Falls with water dripping down all over the place on the wire and everything. He walked across Chicago. He walked across New York. He's going to walk across Orlando next week. He'll walk across anywhere. And he's a gamer, man. He's a game time guy. I mean, he's a get it up, get it on, get up going, buddy. He's that guy, man. I watch him. I've watched other athletes. I see these people, right? Yeah, they're special. But what makes them special is they go to places. They go to places. I'm telling you, they go to places in their heads. They've trained their brains to do things that are unimaginable in athletics. But we do the same thing in our lives for our families, our children, and our companies, and our people. They are no better than us. And don't forget that. But why don't we take something from them? Nick Wallen is getting ready to walk across a volcano in Nicaragua. A volcano that was erupting. A couple hours before the walk, he called me up on the phone. He says, hey, Todd, I just want to talk to you. I say, Nick, it's all good. What's going on? I'm going to a place in my mind right now. And I'm going to be disengaged for just a little bit. And I just don't want you to think that I'm not thinking of you or anybody else, but I, I'm going to a place right now. Get going, man. I, it's a place I'll never, ever be, but that's a place you need to be to get across that wire. It's a story about a little boy, a little boy and his father. And little boy, he said, what are we going to do tonight, Dad? And the dad said, I got an idea. I really want you to come watch a basketball game with me over at the other side of the county. Dad, 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 I just want you to know that I don't like basketball. And the father said, son, 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 it's not about basketball. It's not just about football. I want you to come with me. Be with me, son. And the son said, father. I'll go with you. See, the Eagles were playing a bigger city school, and the bigger city school was pretty good, and the little city school was pretty good, and the farm boys were not supposed to win, of course, but they played hard, and as the father and the son walked into the game, they looked around, the crowd was cheering and taunting and doing all these things. There wasn't any seats, right? The people were shouting, down in front, this is Eagle country. Dad, Dad, I see two seats over there. They happened to be in the front row of this game, so they had no choice but to sit in the front row, have people throwing things and doing whatever they do at these games. And the little boy looked at his father, now we're here, now what, Daddy? He said, son, now just watch this game. And for the next four quarters, the little boy watched this basketball game with amazement. As they battled the bigger school, they pushed, they pulled, 
They pushed, they pulled, they fought, they elbowed, they dove, they scraped, they fought. There was blood on the court. I'm telling you, there was blood on the court. This little boy saw blood on the court. And the little boy just couldn't believe what he was seeing. And then another fight broke out and they were pushing and another athlete dove into the stand to save a, fly, a flying ball. It was just amazing as the ball player flew over the little boy's head and the father was smiling and the little boy was scared but not smiling and the crowd was going crazy. The enthusiasm was unmatchable. It was just electric. The Eagles finally win on a final layup shot after they pass the ball around and great teammanship. The gun goes off, the game is over. The little eagles have won. As they were driving home, back home, against the roads that were a little, little slippery and the father kind of calmed down. He finally looked over to the little boy and he said, son, tell me, son, what did you learn? Well, dad, I learned to pass the ball a lot and to be a good team player. I learned to play really hard and fight to the very end. I learned a new word called relentless and to be relentless, to keep going and going and going and never quitting. And even when it looks to be down, never give up because you could always come back and win. That's right, son. That's right, son. And I also learned to, to, to just, just to be positive and to be a good team player, dive and encourage my other players. I learned, dad. I learned, I learned, how, to, I learned how to play the game hard. The father looked at the son as he slowed the car down and he put it to the side of the road and put the car in park. And he looked over at his little boy and he said, son, no, that's not what I want you to learn. Not to play the game hard, but I want you to live your life that way. To live my life that way. Yes, son. I want you to live your life that way. You see, son, you were born almost five months early. You were not even about five pounds. And when you're not only about five pounds, you almost didn't make it. You had a severe problem called yellow jaundice, and it was so severe that they literally take all of the blood out of your body at a mere five-month-old baby, barely five pounds, and put another human being's blood into your body and took all of yours out. You see, son, you're special. The reason I'm pulled over here on the side of the road is I want you to understand. I want you to understand there's only two types of moments in life. There's fleeing moments and there's defining moments. Fleeing moments, fleeing moments, they come, they come and they come and then you run from them and you run from them, you run from them because you don't want to face them. And then they all reside in a place called a sea of fleas, you know, that's where they go. But son, every so often there's a thing called a defining moment. Defining moments are not only for you, but defining moments are for maybe your spouse when you someday marry somebody or get a partner. Defining moments are someday when you have a child and it affects not only your spouse or your partner, but it affects that child, right? That's a defining moment and it's so defining sometimes that it even goes past your spouse it goes to your child and then your child passes it on to your grandchild you see defining moments are what this life is made of not fleeing moments i want you not to be a fleer but i want you to embrace defining moments and you learn today where to take your brain you learned how to play not only a game but you saw in real life how to play life and this is where the story stops and the teaching begins. Because I, I want you to understand that you are that little boy. You need to understand that if you don't have a place to go in your mind for your big game moments, if you don't understand how special you are, you can't jack yourself up because you don't know how to. You need that story. You need someone to tell you that you are that boy. You are that special boy that was born purposely by God. Get ready for life. Get ready for your family. Get ready for your job. Get ready for anything. You got to get ready because you have to be a conqueror. You have to be an overcomer. You're not a fleer, and you have to decide, just like that little boy was put on the place right there with his father, you have to decide if you are going to handle a fleeing moment or defining moment in the proper way. Are you going to be a fleer or an attacker? Are you going to be a gazelle or a lion? Are you are going to be a never-goer or an overcomer? Because I want you to become overcomers. You are called to be an overcomer. God has called you to be an overcomer. 
overcomer. Not just me, not just Gronkowski, not just Don Brady, not just the average uh, hockey player or the every other athlete out there. He has called you to be elite just like them. Don't just look at them today and say, wow, isn't Tom Brady the GOAT? Why don't you look at yourself in the mirror and say, damn it, I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT of manufacturing. I'm the GOAT of donuts. I'm the GOAT of payroll. I'm the GOAT of factoring. I'm the GOAT of whatever it is you want to be. You are the GOAT. Quit worshiping them. Start to think about what God called you to do because God called us to be overcomers. Period. Revelations 2.7, John wrote seven epistles to seven congregations, and every one of them spoke of them to become overcomers. I want you to have the Father talk to you for your defining moments. And I want you to embrace the fact that you are the goat of your own domain because you are willing to lose who you are to become who you want to be. You're willing to lift yourself up to become who you want to be by losing who you are. You need to go to that place in that defining moment and become that overcomer. Catch me on my podcast, Wired Differently Experience. Catch me on uh, Facebook, Wired Differently. Let's do this thing called Life Together, Wired Differently. Have a great day. Love y'all.